Yeah, I have not tried to pronounce the full name of Krishna. At, at least I can pronounce Krishna correctly, but I'm not sure I can pronounce the rest of the name correctly. <laughs> <laughs> you can just call me Casey. <laughs> <laughs> so Krishna is a senior customer engineer at Google, and I think he yeah, yeah. currently based out of New York in the US, right? Yes. Awesome. Thank you very much for joining us. And Krishna will be talking to us about how to build your first multiplayer dedicated game server on Kubernetes. This is an exciting thing. We have a lot of gamers in the community here, so they definitely uh, want to know how to do this. So over to you, Krishna. Definitely. Hi, everyone. Uh, let me share my screen. Um, uh, and please let me know if I can, if, you, if everyone can see my screen. I'm just sharing my whole screen. It, it's not up yet. OK. It's up now. Excellent. Yeah. Perfect. Um, I can go ahead and start the session, right? Yes, please. Yeah. OK, great. Um, by the way, I'll be presenting the screen. Uh, do if, if there is any pings, please feel free to stop me. Uh, but uh, here's our agenda. So we'll just do some small intro. I'll be talking about the game infrastructure as a whole, how the game back end and front end looks like. I'll take you through building a game step by step. I'm, by the way, I have a, a, a code script, which I already executed given the time. But also, I have the code script, which I'll explain you how to build or deploy a game server on Kubernetes. I'll also talk to talk you through a, another way of doing that using Agonis, which is an open source project. And I'll tell you the difference between doing the hard way versus, versus Agonis way. And I'll summarize that, and uh, we'll leave there. So within half an hour, I'll try to cover as much as possible. Um, I have some simulation. I have some. I have. Uh, I mean, two demos for you to uh, look into and understand how the game infrastructure looks like. So uh, intros. Uh, my name is Krishna Chaitanya. You can call me KC. Uh, that should be good enough. Uh, I am a senior customer engineer working with Google. It, I've been with Google for the last four and a half years. Uh, did a lot of roles, uh, you know, ran the startup program in India, moved to US, now working with enterprise customers and their sales uh, 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 belongs to enterprise sales division. So that's me, uh, love working with startups, uh, love working with community, uh, and love sharing uh, what I learned. Uh, that's, that's all about me. Now let's talk about the game infrastructure. So what you see on the screen is a typical very high level game infrastructure. Uh, uh, the way it looks like is you have multiple clients. It can be mobile, PC, handhold, whatever the client you use. You have a front end and you have a back end. And the front end have two components, game platform services and dedicated game servers. Dedicated game servers is the place where your, your game is actually deployed. Now, analytics and game database is again, you know, at back end. Now, if you go deep dive into what is game platform services, this is where a lot of things happen, like leaderboard, matchmaking. So imagine I wanted to play a game with Abu Bakr. Now, we both actually join online. Someone has to match us for a game uh, onto a dedicated server nearby so that we can play. So that kind of services happen on game platform. So I mean, these combined together are called game platform services. It, this can be like online lobby, chat, inventory management, all the you know ancillary services which runs, uh, which you see on top of the games are kind of like game, we can we can bundle them into something called game platform services. We have dedicated game servers. This is exactly where the game is actually hosted. This can be thousand thousands of servers based on the game you're playing. It can be deployed in multiple regions. It can be deployed in multiple. Uh, 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 hardware, no matter where the game is uh, uh, residing on. Now, coming to the game database, this is where, you know, game also comes with compute and all as well as assets. The assets are something where the images, the video files, all the assets, which are like very heavy in size, they typically actually belong, uh, can be residing. I mean, you, you can create a shared state where you can store the game assets in a game database. And, all, and and finally, you have analytics back. So where the queries, you understand how what's happening within the game, the events within the game, all that information which are real-time happening can be uh, captured in analytics back. 
So these are like four major blocks. I just simplified a lot of gaming art infrastructure for your uh, understanding, but try looking at these are four foundational building blocks to build any kind of backend for a game server. Now, this entire backend can be deployed anywhere. Like you can deploy it in on private cloud, you can deploy it on public cloud, you can actually do even make a fully managed solution, doesn't matter. It's like you're running on Kubernetes, you can run it anywhere uh, uh, for, for this session. A lot of demos you will see. I created Kubernetes engine on Google Cloud. Uh, just it just makes my uh, uh, you know deployment easy. But you can choose to deploy that anywhere in any cloud or any public data center. I mean your own private data center. Now let's go through what happens when two players wanted to play. Now this is kind of a traditional workflow where when two players, if you look at uh, I'm just uh, turning on the laser pointer. So here are the two players who wanted to play a game. So there will be something called matchmaker who will decide who two players would be playing with each other or kind of match them, send a request to a service called a server manager, which essentially takes a game server from the machine cluster and then dedicate, I mean, send the request back to Matchmaker, which will allocate two players on that dedicated game server. Now, re rephrasing it, you send a request to Matchmaker, Matchmaker talks to server manager, server manager talks to machine cluster, dedicates a game server, I mean, takes, takes out a game server, which is uh, uh, near to the players, send the request back, players directly connect to the machine cluster, I mean, dedicated game server, uh, you know, which, which the server manager decided, and then they start playing. Why don't you use load balancer and et cetera? Obviously, the game, the latency is very, very important. The typical architecture of having a load balancer between clusters, all this doesn't work. So you need to think differently in terms of how two players talk, I mean, connect to a game. It's more like a server manager, it, some, some sort of code, which I would say the server manager talking to a cluster, taking the game server, sending it back to two people. That's how uh, um, the workflow looks like. Now, the, the highlighted part on the right is what we need to concentrate on. What do we do to create a server manager, which will take a game server, or how this deployment of cluster of game servers versus a server manager looks like. Now, I'm going to show you a simple demo of of, of a first bit of Open Arena, a game which uh, which I deployed on uh, Kubernetes engine. Now the whole there are so many constraints. Don't look at this game as like a fully production game, but more on more or less a, a smaller version of a dedicated game server I deployed just before joining this call. So what I'll show you know it, uh, uh, it runs one match. It I mean you can look at the constraints it's it's not uh, what i wanted to showcase is this is not a production grade gaming but obviously this is exactly what i just showed you on this screen i'm going to deploy that uh, i already deployed that and i'll show you so before we go there what is the step by step process of building this uh, architecture first of all you can take open arena game server you can set up i mean you can containerize it of, uh, before you deploy into kubernetes cluster and uh, setting up a kubernetes cluster I did it on Google Cloud. You can, I had something called Scale Manager. Scale Manager is a service which will look into the cluster, scales the cluster if there is a huge load. That is an optional service. I did it because you just need to have that scaling on workloads. Like you, you, you need to have more virtual machines uh, available to you if the game is actually scaling. So Scale Manager is a service which runs on top of Kubernetes, which will scale the cluster if at all needed. And we verify the setup, we connect to the game server, we start playing the game. Now, most of them is one-time work. Setting up Kubernetes cluster is obviously done on cloud. Uh, we verify uh, connecting to game server is let's what we do it. Like, let me show you the script, first of all, before I take you through um, the, the demo part. So I hope everyone can see my screen, right? Like the game server. Let's see. Okay. Yes, we can see your screen. Excellent. So if you look at the script for which the first time, you know, you install the tools, 
there there are i mean obviously the tools are kubelet and docker uh, you start actually downloading the game server from a, from uh, 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 from from the storage which we have once you have that the second step is containerizing this uh, i don't want to go deep dive into individual commands but giving you a high level idea that the, this part is about containerizing and uploading it to container registry once you have that this is an important step as i mentioned if you remember the first slide of what i showed you there is a game server game state and a game database so the game assets has to be deployed on a storage which is shared with kubernetes so i created a virtual machine attached a file attached a storage file into it, onto it um, and then uh, you know cleansed um, formatted the disk uh, set up my uh, assets into it deleted the virtual machine had the disk ready set up firewall network created a computing uh, created a kubernetes cluster on google cloud and then attached the disk as a volume and volume claim by the way who, whoever is new to kubernetes think of it is a declarative programming way of um, as, in a, it's a container orchestration engine for uh, for containers so what we are what for for you to summarize the assets volume is where the assets like the videos audios all that file assets of the game are located on so i'm sharing that assets with kubernetes engine so that i can start uh, using them now the scale manager is something where as i mentioned i would use this program to scale my kubernetes cluster whenever it is no needed the nodes when it is needed um, and finally i deploy open arena using the cube uh, 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 open arena which i already containerized deployed that to as a, uh, my content registry um, i'll go ahead and deploy let me show you my screen uh, of what uh, where i deployed this so if you can see my screen this is the cluster which i created and here is uh, let me show you kubernetes cluster kubernetes engine so this is the cluster which i created open arena if you look at it has a couple of nodes located in uh, um, located in us so now i've been running this before we joined the call so what i did is if you look at let's let's uh, get the nodes okay let me So, our kubectl get ports. So you can see there are scale manager which is running, and there is open arena DNS, which is actually the 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 the, the node which sorry the pod which is running. So um, this already executed and it's done. Now let's delete that kubectl delete pod open arena dns let's redeploy that open arena dns pod again now let's deploy the pod again now, if you wanted to see how the pod looks like it's very simple this is how the pod looks like there is uh, it's talking to a volume claim where the assets are located and then starting actually I mean, play is so, um, you know opening up a container with certain arguments which says hey run this container uh, uh run this game server on a specific pod and make it ready so it's it's a very simple uh, uh service now if you go ahead and look at pods again you'll see open arena running now let's do this this is where my open arena is running now so i just had open arena client installed and connect uh, let's connect to the server it might be a small glitch but um, you see it's connecting to the same server which i have and my game started So, now, 
let's exit the game. So this game is connected or running on an open arena cluster, which I already deployed on Google, um, on, on, on Kubernetes, on Google Cloud. And uh, you can see the whole setup launching here. So if I delete the pod, imagine if I wanted to delete the pod again, let's get the pods and let's delete the pod. And let's start connecting the game again. You'll not be able to connect to the game. You see that? So what did we do? I'll just summarize uh, the information again for you. I'm sorry, the so console's open. Did I lost you guys? Can I can someone say hi? Oh, yeah. Here. So what did we do? Uh, just to summarize, uh, Sorry, the, is it possible for you to like maybe reduce uh, uh, your resolution because uh, there's some folks on the live stream that are saying they can barely see the text. Sure, sure. Like I'll, I'll, I'll expand that. So maybe I'll uh, zoom it again for you. Yeah, thank you. Sure, thanks. Uh, so um, you, you miss nothing, by the way, if you don't even see the text because I'll share this script uh, later. But to for your information, what I did is I just deployed the game server. Like I did, I just deployed, I just did the same steps. I containerized a game server, which is an open arena game server. I set up a Kubernetes cluster. I set up a scale manager. I verified the setup. I connected to a game server and started showing you the connection directly. So it's a very simple task, uh, step by step. This is how you can actually build a game server if you wanted to do of your own. Uh, and and uh, as I said, the Kubernetes cluster can be deployed anywhere. I chose Google Cloud. You can set up on your laptop. Uh, it can be done. Now, the challenge with this kind of approach is uh, if you look at the whole architecture, you're building everything of your own. You're actually building your game uh, machine cluster, the server, matchmaker. The best part is you're getting all the benefits of Kubernetes. Your pods are deployed. It's scalable. You can run anywhere. It's a hybrid cloud. Now, what if I tell you there is a better way of doing this? So this is absolutely a perfect way of doing, but there is another way of doing that. So that's called Agonis way. Agonis is an open source project. Let me show you what Agonis looks like. Agonis, Agonis, uh, uh, dev. So if you look at this is an open source project dedicated uh, to run dedicated game servers on Kubernetes. It was it was done by Ubisoft and Google Cloud. Uh, uh, you can you can find all the kinds of examples, also all sort of documentation on it. It's as good as a Kubernetes project. Now what Agonis does is Agonis is a batteries included open source dedicated game server hosting and scaling project, which runs on top of Kubernetes. So basically what Agonis does is, if you are familiar with Kubernetes, it takes the controller part of it, creates a new controller for game servers, which it, it extends Kubernetes for gaming. So you don't need to do all that cluster deployment. It will do it. I mean, Agonis can do it for you. Now, how does the game server looks in Agonis world? So the way game server looks in Agonis world is, uh, obviously, you take a game server application, create Attempt, uh, uh, declaratively create a game server and then actually send it to Kubernetes API. The benefits of that is, it, again, it can be deployed in hybrid environments, physical machines can reduce the cost, Cloudbus can handle the capacity. Now, comparing that with the traditional architecture, traditional architecture, send a request to matchmaker, send a request to uh, server manager, server manager dedicates a game server, clients connect to the game server, you start playing. That's what we saw in our demo. Now, compare that with Agonis, the Kaganos looks like this. Everything now is part of Kubernetes. So if you look at back and forth, there is nothing like the machine cluster is only in Kubernetes. Everything is actually outside. I mean, our, our, our components within Kubernetes. Now, if you look at Kubernetes uh, Agonis architecture, now 
Agnes have you know still have custom matchmaker. I'll talk about custom matchmaker in a while. There is an another open source project called Open Match, which can do a better job of uh, you know talking to Agnes and does matchmaking for you. But imagine you have a custom matchmaker again. Now, client wanted to play a game. Like I wanted to play a game. I sent a, my mission sends a request to custom matchmaker. Abu Bakr wanted to play a game. He sends his request goes to custom matchmaker. Now the request, the matchmaking is done there. And uh, it, the sec, uh, request would be sent to Kubernetes API. Kubernetes API will talk to Agnes controller, where Agnes controller will talk to a fleet. I'll talk about fleet in a short while. But Agnes controller will talk to a fleet, takes a dedicated game server, allocates a dedicated game server for us, send the request back to custom matchmaker. Will custom matchmaker send that information to the clients? And the clients connected to game connect to game server. Same process, traditional architecture in an Agnes way. Everything is Kubernetes now. How you deploy, uh, you know, Kubernetes? I mean, uh, uh, a game in Agnes is very simple. And uh, by the way, before we go, how we can deploy Agnes has SDK integrations in different languages, have different functionalities. The reason why you need this kind of SDK functionality is if you are if your game server wanted to talk to Agnes, wanted to integrate to Agnes to do a lot of activities, um, SDKs really help. So you can actually build your own, integrate your own custom game server with Agonis, start playing that. So it kind of gives you, it takes away the problem of you managing the entire cluster. Agonis does, does that for you. Your game server actually can talk to Agonis, can do a lot of functionality using the SDKs. Now, it works across uh, cloud providers. Uh, it does auto scaling. It's auto scaling is very easy. It has local tool deployments, and you have you'll have a map, dashboard and metrics for uh, for Agnes. Now this is how a typical game server deployment uh, um, uh, declaration looks like. So Zonetic, uh, let's take a first person shooter FPS game uh, called Zonetic. Uh, and if you wanted to dedicate or deploy a game server, you can now deploy a game server using same as what Kubernetes does. You can have a game server kind. And uh, you can specify the ports where the name, obviously, and you can specify the ports where the game server will actually open and run. And the template of image of the Zonetic example, I mean, Zonetic game server, which you wanted to containerize and deploy. So previously, if you look at the script, which I did, you do a lot of stuff for actually deploying, containerizing, deploying that, managing that, and all that stuff. Now, nothing. You just say, I want a game server, like how you wanted a pod. You can say, I want a kind of game server, and this is my container, this is my port, and, and Agonis will be able to deploy that for you. So game server deployment is easy. Now, you want a fleet of game servers. You need multiple game servers, not just one. Now, you have another template called like another declarative way of creating fleet. So fleet is more like multiple game servers, same as how you look at deployment uh, in Kubernetes. Fleet has multiple replicas have a template where you can specify the ports and a template for image, which will run the fleet for you. So things boil down to very simple. Now the controller will be running that, running fleet, running game server for you. And the last one is game server allocation. Now you have a fleet of game servers. Kubernetes API wanted to allocate a game server for you and send the request back to matchmaker based on whether the game server is available for connection or not. You don't want to delete a game server which is which in which players are running. So these kind of requests are done using game server allocation. So game server allocation is another request which you can actually send, where you will be matching with the name, the fleet within the fleet. Help me with a cluster image called Zonetic. You will be able to get a request uh, a game server back for you. So putting this together. It's a, uh, uh, the, the biggest difference what you have seen from traditional way of deploying is you don't need to do everything of your own. Kubernetes, you're extending Kubernetes functionality to build something called uh, Agonis, which is a cluster, uh, which is again uh, having a controller of its own, which will do the job for you of creating a fleet, creating uh, uh, creating uh, a game server, creating a fleet, and then actually doing multiple game server allocations and then give you the back request again. So everything is now handled within Kubernetes instead of you managing it of your own. So it just makes the backend development so, so, so easy. Now, combining this with something called open match, 
will give you much more advanced features. So open match, you can write custom logic within your console, custom logic to create or find compatible players. Uh, Agonis with open match running together uh, can actually build, a, a, you can build a better game server within very short period of time. Now, to summarize, obviously the request comes to open match. You can write custom match logic within open match talks to Kubernetes, Kubernetes talks to Agonist controller, uh, and Agonist controller finds a dedicated game server within the fleet, takes the game server, send the request back to controllers where the people, uh, the clients get connected. Now, let me show you Agonist script again. So let me show you Agonist, before we go to Agonist script, um, here is what, how you can deploy that in Agonist. So I have shown you a big script for gaming on the hard way. So Agonist script is very simple, create a cluster, and uh, you know call the cluster give a cluster a name and this is uh, let me sh quickly run that for you i know we are uh, running out of time but let me show you a demo quickly so what we what we are doing is i just created a kubernetes cluster resto and deployed uh, uh, installed agonis onto it and then deployed a game that's it so three step process very very simple Rest of everything is handled by the scaling, the deployment of a game server, everything is the packaging of solution and then deploying that, everything is handled by Agonis. So you don't need to do a lot of hard lifting on your part. So I already created a cluster. Uh, um, if you look at the, uh, sorry, I already created a cluster called uh, Agonis Demo Cluster. I'm just reusing the same for this demo. And uh, let me create a firewall. I mean, this is a tricky part because obviously I need to uh, dedicate, uh, open up a port with a firewall. And then deploy Agonis into it. Okay, now let me go to Compute Engine. So this is a simple game. Um, what it is doing is I am gonna send a, uh, I, whatever I type, it will send me back the request. So it's a simple server, game server running on Kubernetes cluster use, uh, on Agonis, what, which I created. So let me open a virtual machine and then send a request to this terminal and see what it does. Uh, I have five more minutes. Just give me a moment. I just wanted to show you this demo and we can close this. I'm sorry. So meanwhile, if you have any questions, maybe I'll, I'll start answering them and then I can show you the demo before it loads. Any questions? We don't have any questions from the audience yet. Uh, you can probably just complete what you want to do before I think I have a particular question I need to ask. I'm sorry, you have? Yeah, you can complete the rest of the demo first. Sure, sure. sure. So this is what we did. Uh, I deployed a, 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 a service. Now let's open a virtual machine and start pinging the cluster and see what it does. and uh, this is where we are. This is where I always pray to God and see whether it works or not. 
first demo works perfectly now let's get the game server this is the ip address on the port which i need to get connected to and uh, let's uh, call this and see type in u u port and So I'm actually pinging the game server. I'm actually deploying. Uh, uh, so you, if you observe this, um, let me zoom it a little. So if you observe, now I can say cube get cube CTL gets game servers. Game server is another uh, declarative. Uh, when if I install Loganus, you will get game servers as another uh, uh, type actually. So I'm saying hello uh, world. Uh, it has Africa community. So you, you can see that I'm actually playing with, the, I mean, I'm, I'm able to ping uh, the game server on a UDP port and then get, get the request. So if I wanted to shut down the game server, I can do that. I can say exit. And if you see get game servers, you'll be seeing it is getting shut down. So essentially what we did is I deployed a game server. I installed Aganis. I deployed a game server on top of it. I connected to the game server and then started actually uh, uh, playing with that from another uh, virtual machine. So to summarize, uh, the, uh, the, the, the Kubernetes like the Agnes way of doing this, again, clients request and uh, Agnes will do the fleet management, dedicate the game server back to it. So this is what uh, the two ways of like, if we go back to our uh, agenda, what we discussed so far is um, to kind of summarize. I explained you the game server, then I explained you how you can build the game from scratch by creating multiple services, uh, like you know, by, by containerizing game server and then deploying on Kubernetes cluster. Then I showed you the difference between that and Agnes. Agnes is an open source project and how it is differentiates, how it extends Kubernetes API to give you much more functionality and how that how there is an SDK function, uh, SDK integration where your game servers can work with Agnes and then explained you multiple terminologies in Agnes. Uh, a lot, there are a lot of examples for Agnes. You can build, you can start playing a lot of games by deploying that. Uh, there is, you can play Zonetix uh, uh, game uh, on Agnes very short time. All the examples are there in GitHub and uh, uh, and, and you can you can find more information at agnes.dev. And if you wanted to, I can actually share the script for uh, deploying game server without Agonis also, and you can compare and contrast these two and understand how the game server works. So this is, I'll, I'll stop here, I'm right out of time, uh, but uh, over to you if you have any questions or else, uh, this, is, this is it. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, I think uh, what we'll be looking forward to is sharing the uh, scripts and the, your slides. So we can share it to the community. We'll send it to everyone that RSVP, and also when we are uploading the, your video online, we we'll also share the uh, the scripts and the files that you've shared. Thank you very much for your time, and uh, it's been awesome having you. Thanks, thanks everyone. Thanks for your time. Yeah, have a great day. Sure.